You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to more of the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou, and today, as we get closer and closer to the start of the NFL season, we get set to wrap up the Southern Divisions of my next Man Up series, discussing a player from each team within that division who I believe is going to take that next step and be a breakout star for their team. And again, we're doing the Southern Divisions, and today we are discussing the NFC South. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe button, and then comment down below. Most importantly, let me know. Who do you think from the four teams in the NFC South are poised to have a breakout season or a guy that's even just going to step up and really make a name for himself on their team? I would love to hear what you guys think. So without further ado, let's dive right into it. Beginning with the Atlanta Falcons. This one is, this feels like one of the more obvious choices, but it's also kind of like a necessity as well. But I feel like he's ready to step up for the task just based off his rookie season. And I'm looking right at tight end Kyle Pitts. They took him in the first round last year. And, you know, he he didn't have all the touchdowns, but he had everything else. I feel like that's the one criticism he gets. Oh, he had a lone touchdown throughout the entirety of the season. He's supposed to be this big guy that, you know, can put, you know, be a matchup nightmare in the red zone. Well, he still had 68 catches for 1,026 yards. I mean, and he is still a matchup nightmare. A guy that's the size of a tight end who can move like a literal wide receiver what do you really pair up with him? Do you put a cornerback on him and risk your cornerback getting out muscled? Do you put a linebacker on him that's potentially not fast enough to keep up with him? Do you find a safety who's somewhere within the middle who maybe does not have quite the athleticism in one category or another to match up with Kyle Pitts well? He is a literal headache for teams to deal with. And I really feel like for Atlanta to take that next step forward, whether it's, you know, if it's Marcus Mariota starting in the first few weeks of the season, and if they hand the baton off to Desmond Ritter at some point during the season, or if it's just Mariota the whole year, for this team to really take that next step forward, Kyle Pitts really needs to become that number one option and that number one guy for the team. And I really feel like he's up for the task. And if he is able to do so... When you look at wide receiver Drake London, he's dealing with an injury right now. And, you know, who, who's to say whether, you know, he starts not week one or two or three, however long it takes him to kind of get himself ready to roll. It's going to help him out tremendously as a number one overall or not a number one overall selection, excuse me, a first round selection. It's going to help him out in his development, not having teams focus on him quite as much because he's a first round wide receiver. We've seen what some of these top flight guys the last few years have been able to do in their rookie season. Jamar Chase is a guy that comes to mind. Justin Jefferson before him that have been completely torching defenses right out of college. So if you have a guy like Kyle Pitts who ends up being that true number one guy for the team, it'll really help out Drake London in his progression and obviously hope open things up on the offense altogether. Now, Switching over to the Carolina Panthers, they just brought him in, and I really think that this one kind of goes without saying. Baker Mayfield is the guy on this team that I think needs to be the next man up. You go in, you bring Baker Mayfield, Mayfield comes in and completely steals the quarterback one job. It never really felt even close, if you ask me. Baker Mayfield is, in no disrespect to Sam Darnold, a superior quarterback to him. And he's coming in right now with a massive chip on his shoulder a massive chip on his shoulder you you know you look back just a couple of years ago and you see the Cleveland Browns they're in the playoffs they go into that shootout with Pittsburgh they win the shootout with Pittsburgh then they go to Kansas City and they lose by like the skin of their teeth to the Chiefs you really felt like oh wow this Browns team has finally arrived it's taken 20 years to do so but they have finally arrived and then 21 happens, the shoulder injury happens, Baker Mayfield trying to play through the pain, everyone's doubting him, and you see him getting ripped to shreds online these days from people talking about how bad Baker Mayfield is. I'm not going to sit here and act like he is the best quarterback in the league, but I've got to say this, he does not get enough credit for being willing to tough out the entirety of the season with the shoulder injury that he was dealing with. 
and he was a phenomenal quarterback in 2020. He had 3,563 yards. He had 26 touchdowns, eight interceptions. He had a 62.8% completion percentage, which isn't nice, but when you go into the adjusted completion percentage numbers for adjusting for wide receiver drops, it would have been a 76.1% a number. That is an awesome you're literally completing three of your four passes. They're on target three out of four times. I mean, that's an excellent number there. I think some of the better quarterbacks in the league hover around like the low 80s at best. So he's not too far off from that. He's a gamer. He has a ton of swagger. And from what it sounds like, Carolina has been super impressed with what Baker Mayfield has been doing since he's gotten there, being the first guy in at 5 a.m. He has a huge chip on his shoulder. And I'm kind of a Baker Mayfield guy. I'm rooting for him. I think that, you know, with the situation going on in Cleveland right now, he might be better off not being in Cleveland anymore. And I'll be curious to see how, who ends up winning on either side of that battle. Obviously, that rumor came out saying that he was going to F up the Cleveland Browns. He came out and denied it, saying that that's not going to happen. Whoever put that out there, I really think you're just fueling his fire even more because it's clear that people are not done talking about him and you're just helped growing that chip on his shoulder. And if Baker Mayfield can get this offense down pat and he can get the absolute most out of the skill positions around there, that offensive line hopefully looks better than it did last year and Christian McCaffrey is ready to go. This is a really good team with a awesome defense. It was a fantastic defense last year that was dragging this team along through the whole year. Finally, the offense feels like it potentially could be up to par with it. I like the Panthers odds this year with Baker Mayfield at the helm. Switching over to the Buccaneers, this one is going to be the the one and the only non-player next man up that I've been doing within this series. And when I was looking at the entire roster of the Buccaneers, I look at all these guys and I'm like, everyone here feels like they've already arrived at some point in their career. How can they be the next man up? And then I kind of turned my attention to the coaching staff. And obviously, Bruce Arians has now stepped away from the head coaching spot. And Todd Bowles has now taken over as the head coach. And he is going to be the guy that I look at and consider my next man up. When you look at Todd Bowles, he is, his team is absolutely stacked to the brim with talent. It, every single position, you, you name it, there's a guy on there that would be starting somewhere else. He's going into a vastly different circumstance than when he was on the New York Jets. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that it was all the Jets' fault, but I don't really feel like Todd Bowles was really set up for too much success while he was in New York, and you could argue maybe some of the issues had to do with him. A lot of it, I would have to say, has to do with just the Jets organization as a whole. It's looking like they're trying to fix that now, but at least when he was there... I wouldn't really necessarily say that was the case. Now, you look at his overall coaching record, 24 and 40. You now have a team that is at, at no, guaranteed, it feels like, to win no less than 11 games in a season at this point with how good the roster is stacked. However, the window is closing. I'm not going to say that this team falls apart when Brady leaves, but the ability to bring people in the way they have because Tom Brady is there, is not going to be the same once Tom Brady is gone. Tom Brady has been the clear, you know, kind of push over the edge guy who has really brought this team over the hump. And it's now up to Todd Bowles to go from a 24 and 40 as a head coach guy to now being a Super Bowl contender type of coach, leading this team well into the playoffs more than likely and being that guy that they need. I have seen predictions left and right all over the place. Some people think that with all the, the, the uncertainty around Brady and everything is going to send this whole team out of a tailspin and they're not even going to win double-digit games. I've seen people that say, look at that roster. Brady's there. It doesn't matter what's going on outside the football field. If Brady's on the football field and based off how he looked just last week in preseason, it doesn't really matter. Uh, listen, one thing that I think is not really being talked about is Todd Bowles as a head coach. He is going to be a big proponent of this all. I don't know how much of the offense they're keeping from when Bruce Arians was around. I know, obviously, Byron Leftwich is there as the OC. We'll see what changes and what does not change. But it's going to be up to him, ultimately, to lead this team to victory. We'll have to see if he's up to the task. 
I think he is. And then finally, for the New Orleans Saints, this one was the easiest one for me because this is a team, again, littered with talent that was missing one thing last year and one thing only. The Saints need Jameis Winston to look the way he did the first seven weeks last year. And Jameis Winston is my next man up for the New Orleans Saints. This team was 5-2 and two as Jameis Winston went down with his ACL injury. They completely slammed the Packers week one. And I know it's week one. You know, teams are still sort of figuring themselves out a little bit. Hell, hell the Patriots don't even figure out what they're doing until like week four, supposedly, every single year. But regardless, what happened, happened. And when you look at Winston's numbers, he was rolling. 1,170 yards through those seven weeks. Not a ton, but enough. You have to remember... Alvin Kamara, Mark Ingram, they can win a lot of different ways. He had 14 touchdowns to three interceptions. That was getting close to the halfway point of the season. So you're looking at like 28 to 32 touchdowns maybe by season's end. And if he's continuing that average at picks, six, maybe seven picks altogether, that would have been in terms of like touchdown to interception ratio as Jameis Winston's best year career-wise. He looked fantastic. And now you double down with the fact that they added Chris Olave in the draft, the best route runner in the draft class. Then you're looking at wide receiver Jarvis Landry, a stud who doesn't even have to be wide receiver number one because you obviously have the returning Michael Thomas. Marquez Calloway is definitely no slouch. This receiving corpse is bananas. It literally four guys who are legit dudes that you can be throwing the football to and, and trust. And then, of course, the pairing of Alvin Kamara with Mark Ingram. Now, offensive line, a little bit of a question mark. They brought in Trevor Penning, who was looking really good. He did go down with an injury. And at this point, it's kind of un uncertain when he's going to be back. But Trevor Penning was looking like he was going to be able to solidify that left tackle spot for them. I was very high on him in the draft. And I think he has all the tools he needs to be a premier left tackle in the league. And if he comes back during the back half of the season, he can pick up where he left off during preseason. If Jameis Winston puts it all together, that defense over there is excellent. I firmly believe in Dennis Allen. This is like the perfect situation for him to step up from DC to head coach with the exit of Sean Payton. I think that their offense is probably going to be running a very similar system compared to what they were doing when they had, um, when they, I'm forgetting it, Sean Payton, excuse me, I almost forgot his name. When they had Sean Payton heading the Ross, the, uh, the entire team here. But if Jameis Winston can put it all together, they were a quarterback away from being a legit contender. They missed the playoffs by a hair to the 49ers at the end of the season, all because Jameis Winston set them up at 5-2 and two before he went down. The Saints are a massive dark horse this year. I'm ready for it. I'm here for it. I'm excited to see it. And I think Jameis Winston is going to be the guy that leads them through. But that is... My next man up for the NFC South. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comment section down below. I appreciate you guys for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Have a good Thursday. Good afternoon. I'll catch you guys later.